Hi artists! Today we're going to be creating pictures inspired by the artist Keith Haring. Keith Haring is one of my favorite artists to learn about. He was a very interesting guy and he had a very distinct artistic style. He was primarily a street or a graffiti artist and what he liked to do was he liked to create pictures of figures, so that means pictures of characters or people, and his figures always look like they are moving. Now, how did Keith Haring show motion in a two-dimensional work of art? If you look very carefully, you can see that he did add motion lines around the figures. So it looks like their arms are moving or they're jumping or they're vibrating in some way. And something else that really helps show motion is the pose. A lot of times in art, if you have straight up and down lines or horizontal lines, those look like they are staying still. So if I had like, you know, a figure like this. This is a wooden mannequin that artists use a lot when they're drawing figures. If you have one that just has its arms down and its legs down, what is he doing? He's just kind of standing. He's not really doing anything. But a couple of quick bends and tweaks and your figure is automatically leaping. So you're going to think about pose today. You're going to be thinking about motion lines today. But something that you're not going to be thinking about is details. Keith Haring rarely included details in his pictures. Most of his people are faceless. Um, he didn't really include clothing or eyes or nose or ears or hair. He was really concerned with the overall form. So that's gonna be our focus for today too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be using his signature style with bright, bold colors. And we're gonna be making our own pictures of figures that look like they are moving around a page. You're going to have a lot of creative freedom with this activity. Your figures can be posed at random like mine are, or you're welcome to choose a theme for today's project. Maybe you have a sports theme. Maybe you have some other kind of theme. It's up to you what you come up with and all of your poses are having to do with the theme. To create your own Keith Haring inspired figure drawing composition today, you are going to need a piece of paper. You're going to need a pencil and an eraser. You're going to need a black marker. I'm going to use a Sharpie for mine. And you're going to need coloring supplies of your choice. You can use crayons. You can use markers. You can use paint if you have it. It's up to you what coloring supplies you use. Now, to begin, you're going to have to decide if you would like to create random poses or if you would like to have a theme to your work. If you choose a theme, choose that in the beginning. Maybe you want figures to be doing some sort of dance. Maybe your theme is basketball and you have actual basketballs in the picture and all the, the characters are doing things that have to do with basketball. It is your choice if you are going to be random or if you are going to choose a theme, but decide that going in. Now, the first thing that you're going to do today is you're going to create figures in different poses with a pencil on your paper. Draw them very lightly because you're gonna end up erasing them later on when I draw a figure in a Keith Haring style, I like to actually start with a stick figure first. So I'm going to start with kind of like that lollipop shape, um, circle head, torso. I can do maybe arms up. I can do arms bent. I can do legs bent. I can do um, legs straight. It's really up to you what your poses are. And again, they can be random or you can actually choose a theme. Oh, and uh, torsos, just so you know, they don't always have to be straight. Sometimes they can be bent. Um, that'll kind of lend more motion. Arms can be curved. It's really up to you what your poses are. Do your best.
Okay, now that I have my figures drawn, what I wanna do is I wanna turn them from stick figures into figures that I'll actually be able to add color to. So I'm gonna have to bulk them up a little bit. What I want you to do is actually use your pencil and I want you to outline around your figures. And if you would like to do subtle things to make it look like, for example, um, that there's like a hand here, I'm kind of making more of like a circular shape um, around the hand just to kind of give the figure a little bit more definition. So I'm actually outlining around both sides of that stick shape I had initially created. You can do that for all of your figures. Now that I have outlined around my figures, I'm going to use an eraser and I'm going to erase that initial stick figure shape inside that I created. Again, it's up to you what poses you pick. Um, some of mine didn't fit. So I have like one guy off to the side, um, coming off the page, waving high. I have some people upside down. Um, feel free to add as you go. Your figures can be big or they can be small, but definitely don't forget to erase the middle area. Now that I'm all finished erasing the stick figure centers, I'm going to use a technique that Keith Haring often used for his figures. He liked to use black paint and make a dark outline. So this is where your black marker it's going to come in handy. I want you to outline around all of your pencil lines. Now that I'm done outlining around my figures, I am going to, again, use one of Keith Haring's most famous techniques, and I'm going to add motion lines. I want you to create motion lines around your characters to make them seem as though they are moving. So maybe they're jumping. Like if I wanna make this guy look like he's leaping, I can add some motion lines underneath him. I can do that um, by anywhere that I want to look as though it is moving. Something else really fun that you can try is Keith Haring liked to add other items into his artwork sometimes as well. He liked to add symbols sometimes like hearts, like peace signs. In your artwork, if you do have a theme, maybe you want to draw something that's supportive of that theme. Like this guy kind of looks like he's in a uh, football throwing pose. Maybe he's actually going to throw a football. So feel free to add things to your pictures if you would like to. Now that I'm done creating motion lines, the last thing that I want you to do to complete this project is add color. And again, you can use whatever art supplies you have available. Keith Haring preferred to use bold, bright colors in his artwork. So if you would like to also use bold, bright colors in your artwork, you are welcome to do so. so but again, you don't have to. You are your own artist. So it is totally up to you what colors you choose. Maybe your colors are in tune with your theme if you have one. If there's anything else that you would like to add to your picture that I have not added to mine, you are more than welcome to do so.
now that I'm finished coloring in my Keith Haring inspired figures in motion composition, take a look at your own and see if there's any empty spaces that you would like to fill in or if there's anything that you would like to add. Maybe you want to add more motion lines. Maybe you want to add some um, little half figure guys like this one. It's really up to you what symbols you use, what poses you use. If you do a theme, if you don't do a theme, have fun with this. Make it your own. Yours does not have to look exactly like either of mine. Mine definitely don't look exactly like Keith Haring's. Every one of you is your own artist, but we can always be inspired by each other and artists throughout history as we create. I hope you have so much fun with this. Definitely share a picture with me when you are finished. Have fun.